Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Whiskey Geek. Today we're doing a blind tasting of some budget bourbons. I picked these bottles up last summer, no, two years ago, two summers ago. And I have slowly worked my way through them, I've appreciated them a number of times. Um, but as I'm getting to the end of the bottle, I wanted to pull Dan in. Dan's not been on my channel in so long, mostly because the channel's been dormant for so long, but we haven't even really sat and appreciated whiskey together for no. all of COVID. Yeah. Which is filthy. So Dan's coming in because um, he, he also needs to know about bourbons. I do. I think you may have actually had more experience with bourbon than I do with all your going out drinking. All my shenanigans. Yeah. Um, okay, first things first, we got a selection of five here. You can see them in front of you, Maker's Mark, Eagle Rare, Woodford Reserve, Bullet Bourbon, and Buffalo Trace. These are um, all fairly accessible, even here in the UK. Uh, I think, I get the impression that they might even be easier for us to find here in the UK than they are in the States, weirdly. Um, and they're all less than £30 for us. I think the average price that I paid here is about £24, £25. So, Easy enough for us to find in the UK and not crazy money. What we're going to do is establish what glassware we like them in first. We've got a selection of glasses, a thistle glass, a this is technically a distillery glass, a, a capita style, Glencairn, uh, I'm not sure what that's called, and a fairly classic uh, tumbler style glass. Because I'm low on whiskey on all of these bottles, uh, we can only do it with one so that we're getting a fair comparison of the glassware. And the only one that I've got a fill level that I don't think we're gonna run out of is the Bullet Bourbon. So this is where we're starting. So let's do it. So, do you know what a bourbon is? It's American whiskey brewed in, is it Kentucky? I say brewed, distilled. Is in that interesting that you'd say that and uh, that is kind of more of an understanding than I probably had um, before I picked these bottles up. Did a little bit very quick research uh, by which I mean I went on Wikipedia, the font of all knowledge. Um, it is legally controlled in America and Canada but everywhere else the only protection that they really have over the term bourbon um, is through trade agreements. It's made in America or uh, territories, which is uh, Puerto Rico and District of Columbia. I don't think I've ever seen a bourbon from not the USA, but apparently it can be uh, Puerto Rico. Or... So says Wikipedia. Um, made from a grain mixture, so the mash bill is at least 51% corn, which means that 49% of it can be other cereals. Right. Right. Uh, or barley, I guess, so a bunch of different stuff, but 51% of it has to be corn. So it has to be aged in new oak um, containers, I think is the way it's stated, so typically um, virgin American oak barrels. Are distilled at no more than 80% ABV, so you've got a maximum for the distillation off of the stills. It has to be uh, put into its aging container at no more than 62.5% ABV and it has to be bottled at a minimum of 40% ABV. There is no minimum age but there are additional terms to bourbon um, like straight bourbon which is aged for a minimum of two years. If it's less than four years and it's straight they have to tell you how old it is and uh, for a straight bourbon there's no added colouring, flavouring or additional spirits. If it says bottled in bond, that is an extension of a straight whiskey and um, it has to be at least four years. Something about Kentucky though, isn't it? Oh yeah, so it's not technically, I think some places say, some Kentucky distilleries in particular like to say that it has to be made in Kentucky, but legally it doesn't. There's just a lot of history with Kentucky. Um, I think there's something specifically about iron rich water and being filtered through limestone, which they say makes Kentucky bourbon better. I think some of these are Kentucky bourbon. Bourbon, Eagle Rare is Kentucky. Maker's Mark is Kentucky. So there's. Yep, Kentucky. There is some here for us to assess from Kentucky. 
Anyway, whiskies. Let's have a sniff. So what we're looking for here is which glassware is presenting the whiskey best to us. That one's soft and mellow. That's almost... Go, do that one first and then the Glencairn. It's almost um, like not necessarily richer but fuller, almost like it's more oily. Oh, the Glencairn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's weird, isn't it? It's not. It's like the delivery of the flavour, not the wealth of flavour. Mm. Now these glasses always do something peculiar, um, and it depends a lot on the whiskey as to what it does. With this particular whiskey, the Bullet Bourbon, it is really making it less sweet, more cereally to me, but like a creamy vanilla-y cereal. <laughs> so I really like it from that glass. But I'm also hesitant. The rest of them, you could tell it was the same whiskey. That one, it's almost like a different whiskey. So I, whilst I think I like it most out of that glass, yeah. I, it could it could just as easily mi misrepresent the other whiskies as it could help us to enjoy them. So let's let's take that one as an anomaly, as okay. I frequently do. Which of these do you think was best? I personally thought this one. I was going to say exactly the same thing, which is really weird for me because with scotch, pretty much every time I've done something like this, I preferred a Capita style glass, a distillery glass, ISO glass. But the Glencairn's really rocking it for me at the, at the minute. It does. It, I feel like it takes some of the harshness out, especially comparing it to this one. Yeah. yeah. So, should we do the same on the palette and see? I'm like, this is one thing that blew my mind when you first like started presenting whiskies in different glasses to me is how different one whiskey can taste. You tried next to the thistle glass and the same whiskey just smelled like a completely, completely different whiskey. Different. Like not not even related in style. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. It's good fun. I think I probably prefer it tasting out of this one. <laughs> I didn't want to lead you, but exactly the same thing. From the nose it's the Glen Cairn. On the palate it's the distillery glass. Mm -hmm don't 100% know why and just and then try it from that is it the way the like fumes travel through your <coughs> nose or like your wind well, pipes or what it must be about the concentration of the evaporate because once once it's getting to your nose it doesn't it's not like your nose will interpret it differently is it mm. it's it's something about how it gets there and so the only thing i can think of is your distillery glass kind of closes off which helps to either focus the evaporate mm. or to retain the evaporate, try and stop it escaping. Whereas the Glen Cairn tapers out. Yeah. Which from a, a very kind of funnels it. Yeah. It, it opens and and almost uh, helps it to escape. Mm. So the only thing that I can think of is the Glen Cairn has just enough to alleviate some of the concentration, whereas on on the distillery glass it holds it, and holding it on the palate helps you to get something more from it, maybe. Mm. So, what are we thinking? Distillery glass or Glen Cairn? I would go with a Glen Cairn, just because I love the glass. I think it's my favorite glass. <laughs> cool, I'll, I'll go with the Glen Cairn as well, because I'm all about that nose. So, next up, we want to do things blind. For that, we're gonna pull Lydia in, ask her to help us um, with a stack of Glen Cairns, pour them blind so that we can go through and figure out which we like, and then figure out or she'll tell us which whiskey it was. Hello dear, you went to Edinburgh recently with Dan, didn't you? Yes. And you visited the Scotch Whiskey Experience? Yes, I did. And you actually drank one of the whiskeys? I did have to put a bit of water in, but I managed to finish one. So, that is an improvement. Is an, did you taste the others as well? Most of them. I didn't try the peaty one. Didn't try one. the smoke head. <laughs> okay. But I learned about having to like open your mouth and everything. I did pay attention. <laughs> um, well, if you want to you try these, you can do. Thanks. <laughs> so you're going to pour them blind for us. The glasses are labelled A, B, C, D, E. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that the A's are the same, so we're both sipping the same stuff, B's are the same, C's are the same, simple enough. Etc. And when you're done, tally up which A, A is which whiskey, and then take that sheet of paper with you and keep it guarded. Okay. Happy? Yes. Cool. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome.
Right, we've got our five whiskies poured. Lydia's taken the answer sheet away. So let's start with A, see what we think. What we're looking for here, what we're assessing is just how much we like them. It's quite sweet, mm. brown sugars, vanilla, and there's a tiny hint of floralness to it, but pleasant. Yeah, it's good. Enjoy, enjoying that one. Ooh, that one's a bit richer. I'm getting more cereal, more kind of dark fruity, raisin molasses type brown sugars. This one's cereally as well, isn't it? Yeah, I'm finding that one a bit harsher, uh, more solventy. I think there's much more of that kind of pollen floral element to it. I like this one. What makes you like that one? A mixture of the previous ones. <laughs> like it's cereally, but it's still like sweet and fruity. And all together quite mellow and relaxed. Yeah. Hmm. Palmer violets. Oh yeah. I was very, gonna say I recognise that smell. Very, very floral, quite confectionery sweet. Am I, is the idea that I rank them? Yeah, yeah. We because I'm gonna lose track, I'm probably gonna put my preferences in based on the nose. Okay. And then test them on the palate and adjust it if I think it needs adjusting. Okay. So we definitely do have some differences there. Yeah. Let's see see if our opinions change on the palate. One thing I'm noticing is keeping the lids on is retaining the evaporate, but as they're being allowed to kind of breathe and some of that to escape, I'm getting a little bit more points of interest, a little bit more of the definition is coming through. So should we be doing them together, sorry? Um, yeah, I'll try. I'll follow your lead if you want. So I'm on A now. Okay. That's got something to it on, on A. Did A jump up into your favourite? Mm. There is um, more than kind of a one dimensional sweetness. And particularly coming from, I think it was C I had before, it was lots of sweet and floral and simple. This has got, again, that woody influence, but it's got a nice spice to it and it's got um, kind of more character, I guess. It's more full. Mm. So E was my favourite on the nose, but it's been nudged down to third so far. <laughs> You're doing B? Yep, B. B. Sorry. That's like smoke. It's almost smoky for me. Something sour, a sour cereal, sourdough type influence to it. There's a kind of a flatness. Like it, it's. I can kind of see what you're saying about it being smoky. It's like there's a, a mulchy, wet element to the cereal and quite green. It's not a lot of flavour there, is it? Well, not a lot of flavours that I like. <laughs> it's definitely better than B. This is where my goldfish memory comes into play, because I can't remember what any of the others taste like. <laughs> well, we've got plenty of whiskey left to sample and contrast. D is really quite floral on the on the palate. There's um, something almost chemically about it to me. I'm confused. Every single time I go back to one, I'm like, mm, that's not what I was getting the last time. <laughs> they're, again, they're all fairly, they're similar, they're takes on a theme, but even when you go back to it, it's like, there's a new uh, character, there's a new point of influence, there's like this weird, whether it's peanut butter or Thousand Island or pollen or Palmer Violet sweet, it's like the, something else juts out at you and you're like, there's not, necessarily a consistency to the flavour I'm finding. Mm. We've decided on our preferences. Please tell us what they actually are. We've both got A first. A is your favourite? Yes. Okay. A was Eagle Rare. Okay, Eagle Rare. Sweet but light. Yeah, that would be the extent of my tasting note, my, my nose, nosing notes. There is a bit of an alcohol prickle, a, a tiny touch of a burn pollen-esque burn, it's like it's touching on those floral and those quite uh, natural greener tones that is, is presenting the prickle. There's a bit of woodiness, a little bit of spice, but it's not a concise spice. Very pollen -y. On the palate, it's all of those sweet and, and really quite 
friendly characteristics. It almost goes creamy, it's quite full bodied and it's very friendly, I guess. Everyone seems to like this one online. It's a 10 year old bourbon. Good taste, Dan, good taste. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now, Dan likes D. I do like D, but not as much as Dan. What's D? D is bullet bourbon. Okay, bourbon. You bourbon. Gotta, gotta say bourbon or the Americans will come for you. <laughs> Justify D being in second place to me. All right, you're about to hear some masterclass taste, I know. It's not harsh. That, I, <laughs> it smells nice, like, I, I don't know. It definitely does smell nice, but I find it quite thin. Maybe that's what I like about it. On the palate, it livens up for me. There's, there's more to it, and it's, um, I think it's a little bit more aggressive on the palate than the nose would lead you on to believe. I don't know, it feels thick. It feels like a oily whiskey. It feels... Yeah, like it, it cuddles your tongue when it there's a nice, comes in. A nicer body to it. It's not it's not thin on the palate. It yeah. clings quite well. But I still I struggle to find it's I guess it's boring to me. It's not that it's bad, it's just There's not a depth of flavour to you. I think probably what I <coughs> rate whiskey off or rate any alcohol off for that matter is drinkability. <laughs> like can I drink this? Yes, I can. Um, next up, C. C is Marker's Mark. What? Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark. <laughs> These ones are easier to say than the Scotch names. You can't say Maker's Mark. <laughs> I misread it. <laughs> Again, quite light, uplifting, floral, vanilla. You know the smell of a room after you've painted it. Oh yeah. That's yeah, what I. I that. That's what I got on my nose when I smelled that, that. kind of solventy, but. It's like it, they've they've tried to mask the smell of of chemicals with um, something a little bit resinous. It's some, something that they're trying to make pleasant when it's yeah not necessarily fundamentally mm. on the on the palate. It transitions a bit more sugars, um, a little bit of spice, but it's more akin think, to the confectionery. I think you are right to be honest. <laughs> no, don't let it don't let it affect you. No, I feel like, like I'm, literally I just feel like I'm bullying those. you. No, no, it's not a bullying. I honestly, that is what I probably. Well, let me just try D again. Oh no, sorry. Stick with your gut. Yeah, I am sticking with my gut. <laughs> he is Buffalo Trace. I can't reach. Oh, there you go. Now I'm getting something um, quite green pine, quite um, fresh almost resinous, a little bit minty, all mm. underpinned by quite a soft caramel sweetness. Do you remember Uncle Merv's Garden? Yeah. That's, for some reason, that came to my mind when I smelt this. There is There was something in Uncle Merv's Garden that he used to implant on trees that would live off of those trees that he had, like, directly out of his, his back door. And it was quite a waxy um, floral, I think a I'm, kind of woody tone, uh, like fresh, live wood. I definitely prefer that one on the nose than I do to the flavour. I think it's very harsh when you drink it for me. And finally, what's his reserve? It was B. Wood. B. It's quite harsh. Straight away, what's what's coming out to me is uh, in the nostrils. There's a prickle. There's a a burn. Then when you try and dig into the flavours of it, it's kind of coarse. It's aggressive. There's some kind of woody coconut tannins. <clears throat> like a cardboardy smell. So we both struggled with B, which is interesting because knowing what I've been pouring, knowing what I've been drinking, I've quite enjoyed that whiskey in the past. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's that's our our point of agreement. Eagle Rare is the best. Woodford Reserve, least enjoyed. And then you like the bullet more than I do. Mm. And I rated the Buffalo Trace. The power of marketing, can I just say, as this is by far the coolest bottle. <laughs> and this is the least interesting bottle. Cool. Good job, Eagle Rare. Now, um, testing them on ice and testing them with Coke. Are you up for doing that? Fine. We'll be back in a second then. 
Okay, so I don't actually have ice because I am hugely prepared as always, um, but what I do have is whiskey stones, which will do the same thing without watering it down, which possibly is better. If you want to take two of these. Sorry. Good job, Liddy, you broke all my glasses. I'm sorry. <laughs> Start with the B. How has ice or cooling stones helped or changed it? What did B taste, smell like? Uh, anger and hatred. Anger and hatred. I think this actually oh, smells friend. better. It's done exactly the same thing to that whiskey as it has done to A. I was just sniffing A. It's like just toned it down. It's muted it a lot. Yeah. So it's like it's really closeted, claustrophobic and hidden. So all of the aggression is gone. But likewise, all of the niceness has gone down here. It's just like right. the smell has gone almost. I wonder if it'll do the same to the palate. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's as harsh. At C and D, I was just nosing them, I think they have actually taken the stones, the coldness, better. Oh, really? In that they're, they've lost less. Now, have a go at D and see if you can get anything like peanut or peanut br brittle from it. Mmm. Yeah, peanut butter. Is Almost it? smells like peanut butter. Oh, sorry, it tastes like peanut butter. In a kind of weird way. Yeah. So E, Buffalo Trace. This is the only 40% one, I think. I don't Ooh. know if that's helped it out at all. I think it's kind of, for me, you made it worse. But nice. Much, much greener, much more floral. Oh, really? Is this the one that we said Palmer Violets for? I was trying to include Lydia there. Let her, Lydia, Lydia have a smell. Sorry, Liz. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I have just drank Palmer some. Violet. Uh, it was, I think that was the one that was quite Palmer Violets without the ice, but for that it's become more floral, like pollen, I think. Yeah. A little I'm bit. I'm getting like meadows and... Yeah, green and, yeah. and quite natural and open and fresh smells. Yeah. So the last thing that we want to look at, bourbon and coke. We, or I particularly, have probably used up a good chunk of these bottles by putting them in with coke because I quite enjoy it. Some people might be offended by that, but I pay for the whiskey, I get to do it. Um, so, how does this affect it, and does one whiskey take better to being added to Coke than others? Let's take a look. I mean, you can hardly tell this. After drinking all that whiskey, you can hardly tell this whiskey. <laughs> Have a sip of the Bullet, though, because I find it much more noticeable in Eagle Rare. And what it adds, what the Eagle Rare adds is... Um, a bit more of the woodiness which contrasts we're not saying what generic black fizzy liquid we've used here because I'm not getting into that world of hurt but it contrasts with the um, sweetness of a coke because it's adding something new whereas the bullet bourbon doesn't seem to add as much to me because it's like sweet on top of sweet mm. So it's like hidden alcohol, whereas right. Eagle Rare is showing itself, if you like. So it depends it's more flavoursome. Yeah. Granted, we've already had, we're already feeling the effects of this, but the maker's mark, I can't even tell it's got alcohol in it. <laughs> That's dangerous. Quite honestly, I have not been able to tell there's alcohol in any of these. <laughs> Does it smell like there's alcohol in them? Well, we've just been you drinking. You tell us. Yeah. I, I can't smell it. I think that one on the palate um, is showing slightly better than the maker's mark. It's more noticeable. So whiskey and coke to me. I mean, whiskey and just unnamed just beverage to me. Just <laughs> not got high expectations of this one. <laughs> Go for it. So that's the only one I can tell is worse than the others. I've got absolutely no objections to that with coke. Really? I I have of these whiskies, the ones that I've been drawn to for drinking with coke. It's been the Woodford Reserve and the Maker's Mark, which is ironic given that I can't tell the Maker's Mark is in there at the moment, and the Woodford Reserve stands out to me as because it has that fight, it's still very present when it's diluted with Coke. Right. The Eagle Rare is really good with Coke because it shows something through the Coke, but cola, but it's not as good as drinking the Eagle Rare neat. Whereas the Woodford Reserve, I think I enjoy more. Yeah. Over cola. I definitely, yeah, for sure. I enjoy that more in this form. 
So, there we go. There's our summary. There's our slightly drunk, rosy-faced summary. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Can we get your verdict? This is the eagle rare. This is the one that we think is best. Have a Wait. sniff. Okay. You can taste it if you want to. If you think the nose is good enough. Can you paint a picture for me? Come on, come on <laughs> I'll down. I'll try it. You're on test. Okay, let me paint a picture for you. You're in Kentucky. Okay. <laughs> I'm in Kentucky. You're driving down the freeway. Okay. I feel like I should slide as well, I'm listening. Mm-hmm. You're uh, smoking a cigar and... As always. Obviously, you're on a Harley Davidson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much further you want to go. And then cigar in mouth. I cigar have, in mouth, I have, yes. a, have a drink of this. Yeah. Tastes like freedom. Think of eagles soaring over mountains. Okay, I, I see it. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> now. How about this one, by comparison? This one doesn't smell as nice. Is it harsher? Yeah. That what that one? I can stick my nose in for longer. I couldn't do that as much with this one. If that means anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's again less aggressive. It's not. We we said that this one feels like it wants to pick a fight with you. But yeah. You, but you're not sure why. <laughs>